And so now you see a lot of organizations, and particularly professional speaking organizations, trying to understand how to meet the needs of a client, which is to bring people together, to tell them a story, to deliver a message, but also to get them to activate with one another. This is something that you and I are very big on, is bringing people together to build communities of knowledge, because we both know that when people share, they learn from each other. When they learn from each other, they increase their capacities, and then they go out and take those capacities and do and change the world. And how do you do that if you're not bringing people together? Well, <laughs> we have Reddit. We have Stack Exchange. We have lots of systems that actually already do this. How do we marry what we're doing here now, having a conversation with those other systems? How do we play both of those modes? Because characteristically, people have wanted to be in one mode or the other mode. You want to be embodied or you want to be online. This kind of halfway between the two, we don't. We don't have a lot of experience in this because we've never needed a lot of experience in this. So now all of us are getting a lot of experience in this. But you take a look, Microsoft did its build conference in May, at the end of May, for the first time, rather than having 6,000 people in Seattle, because that's where they would normally have it, they had it online and they had 200,000 people. The same thing happened with Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, with Google I.O. These conferences that were big in-person events are now massive, global, huge events. And all of these organizations are like, wait, why didn't we ever do this before? And of course, it's because we do treasure that one-on-one. -on -one. So, Russ, I'm going to ask you, how do you think we're going to actually square that circle? How do we get the best of the one-on-one -on -one and the massive togetherness we can get online? So, the, so it's a bit frustrating sometimes because uh, I, and I think you often get to invite, okay, want a keynote? <laughs> and there's a lot more opportunities to design better conferences. And so one of those always things is, okay, we got chained. Where's the opportunity? And for me, the opportunity is in far more participation. And yes, of course, in a physical conference, you can ask people, you can get questions from the audience, you can get some response, you can get hands up, and a few other techniques like that. And, you know, you bump into people in the, the coffee lounge. But we, we all need to be able to create the serendipity of the right connections between people. And also the, the, the real constructive conversations. And that's one thing which I really want to say is how do we get conversations which are not just, oh, that's an interesting conversation, but actually leads to somewhere. Which leads yeah. to some of the, the great collaboration platforms, the, the facilitation platforms. There's Lumio, for example, and a stack of others that really build, built around saying, well, how do we get a conversation which gets somewhere? And we need to work with event organizers so that they start to say, all right, we're not just trying to replicate a physical event in digital. And that's what 95% of them seem to be at the moment saying, okay, well, let's just rethink that. We've got a bunch of people online. Yes, we want some people to stimulate conversation, but let's get those conversations to places they can take somewhere. And I'd love to hear any of your thoughts your thoughts around any tools or techniques or approaches to, to get that engagement once you've got a group of people together. We've already seen the universities, which are also being forced to do something very similar. We don't see a university as being the same thing as a conference, but it's kind of a big, long-running conference, right? And the universities are now being forced online. But the universities had already had the flipped classroom model. So, you know, I might come in and give a guest lecture at the university, but if I were actually teaching a class at university that was running for an entire semester, I would probably just pre-record all of my lectures, get the students to watch them, and then when we had our class time together, it would be Q&A around the content of the lecture. That's the flipped classroom model. It's fairly well established now. Most universities are very well set up to be able to provide the flipped classroom model, and that points to one way of being able to do a conference, which is that, yeah, the keynote is important, but the keynote, as you point out, is the start of a conversation that can then generate, that can then produce. And then the question is, how do you put people together in that environment? Perhaps it's similar to what we're seeing on Netflix, where a bunch of people will watch a horror movie together and comment on it on the side channel. It could be as simple as that. 
But it could also be then that there's a richness of tool and connectivity around there that allow people who do have that serendipity, that do have that great idea to run away and work on it. And in some ways, that now starts to look a bit like an unconference, an unconference where people propose topics and then there's space made available and tools made available for them to be able to work on the ideas that they're generating, that they're co-generating together. Yes, but you're right. That, we don't have we don't have a lot of ideas on how to do this yet. It's a, a very a very interesting time for experimentation. 